Hello everyone, I welcome you all to my first complex lecture video on introduction to microprocessor for subject my uh, microprocessor being run in CS department KCS 403. I am working as a student professor in Department of Electronics and Communication Engineering, Ajay Kumar Gar, Engineering College. So, first I will give you a brief review about the uh, syllabus, all, all the topics covered in the subject microprocessor KCS 403. So, the subject is being divided into 5 units. Unit 1 talks about the basic introductory part that is the microprocessor evolution and its types, microprocessor architecture and operation of its components, addressing modes, interrupts, data transfer schemes, then instruction and data flow, timer and timing diagrams and some interfacing devices that which are required to connect any input or output device with the processor, uh, processor being 85 or 86. Then unit 2 talks about the basics of 8085. So, it says that you have to discuss about the pin diagram and internal architecture of 8085 microprocessor, its registers, ALU, control and status uh, signals, interrupt and machine cycle. Then the second part focuses on the programming concepts. It discusses about the instruction sets, addressing modes, instruction formats and all the instruction set is classified basically into data transfer instruction, arithmetic instructions, logical operations, some branching instructions machine control instructions and finally, some assembler directives which are being used to process the instructions. Then unit 3 discusses about the 8086 microprocessor and it discusses about its architecture, register organization, bus interface unit, execution unit, its memory concepts, how the memory is being organized and how the, mem the me about the memory segmentation, its modes, minimum and maximum modes, the various instructions, instruction format and finally, the description of all the instructions related to 8086. And the last topic discusses about the hardware and software interrupts of 8086. Then unit 4 covers about the programming concepts based on 8085 and 8086. So, it includes all the concepts of data transfer, arithmetic, logical, branching, looping, counting, indexing, counter and time delay, stack and subroutine, conditional call, return instruction. So, programming based on all these concepts are being discussed in unit 4. Then unit 5 discusses about the following peripheral devices, A237 DMA controller, A255 programmable peripheral interface, A253 or 54 programmable timer counter, A259 programmable interrupt controller, A251 USART and RS232. Then the textbook being used for the subject of the first one that is a Ramesh Kaunkar. Ramesh Kaunkar is being used for the 8085 processor majorly and the peripherals being taught in unit 5. Then uh, DV halls can be referred for 8086, DV Bray and other books can also be referred. So, this lecture I will be basically discussing about the uh, basic terms related to the microprocessor, what is a microprocessor, its basic definition, what are all the components of a microprocessor, then how a microprocessor based system look like and finally, some number system that is a prerequisite. Now, what is a microprocessor? So, if we say that uh, I have got a term microprocessor. So, I can just divide it into two parts micro plus processor. So, we say that it is a term which is a combination of two terms which says that I am going to process something and micro means I can have a chip which is of micro which is which is smaller in size it is a micro size and I can also say that it is a IC which is being used to process some of the instructions in microseconds. So, it can refer to its speed. So, I can say that microprocessor is one of the most exciting technological innovations in electronics since appearance of transistors in 1948. Microprocessor is a multi-programmable means it can program, it can, it can be used to handle many programs at the same time, clock driven. The it is a very important term, it is a clock driven IC that means all the uh, functions related with the microprocessor they all are synchronized, register based. It has uh, every processor has got a set of registers which vary from processor to processor. Digital integrated circuit that means it is going to process your digital signals. Now, the input which I am going to give to the processor it should be in binary form that is I have to give a binary input and then it will be processed. So, if you got have got a analog input, so first you need a A to D converter. So, from analog to digital you will be uh, con you will having your con you will be converting your input after that it will be applied to the processor IC and finally, we will get our output. So, it takes binary data as an input 
it processes according to the instructions stored in its memory and provides the results as output. So, it will take the binary input as the uh, in data as the input, it will process it according to the instructions which are being stored in the memory and will finally provide you the result uh, as per the your application. If you want your result to be displayed on the LED or LCD screen or a 7 segment screen. So, depending on the application, it will display your result. So, I can say that it is a CPU on a single chip that contains millions of transistors. So, microprocessor is nothing but a CPU uh, which is having, which is processing something and it contains everything on a single chip and on that single chip are having millions of transistors. So, the microprocessor as we have discussed, microprocessor is a clock driven device which is being fabricated with LSI or VLSI technology. It contains several registers which are being shown here, which contains several registers and it has several registers. Then it is used to perform some multi-purpose and multi-programmable device. So, it has a set of registers and I have got a ALU which will be performing the operations based on the data stored in this register array. And I have in the first line I have mentioned it is a clock driven device. So, I must have a control unit to synchronize its operation. So, the components of microprocessor divided into three parts, register array, arithmetic and logic unit and a control unit. So, ALU, arithmetic and logic unit, it is a digital circuit present in the microprocessor to perform arithmetic and logic operation on digital data. Then I have got a register array, it is a group of flip flops or uh, register, uh, I can say it is a group of flip flop as uh, every flip flop stores a single, single bit data. So, if I have got a register and I say that I have got an 8 bit register, that means uh, the capacity of a register is, is 8 bit, it can store 8 bit data. You have got a flip flop which stores only single bit data. So, to make a register of 8 bit, you need 8 flip flops in cascade form. So, if you have got a 8 registers, 8 flip flops in cascaded form, you make one register. Now, I am saying I have got a register array. So, I have to stack up all these cascaded flip flops to make a register array. So, if I say that I have got a 4 cross 8 bit register, that means that I have got 4 registers each 8 bit in capacity. So, the register array will vary from processor to processor. Every processor has a different set of uh, registers. Uh, this is actually basically the register where your input is stored and based on this input, you will be performing certain operations, some arithmetic and logic operations and after uh, those operation or after the execution of that particular operation, your result is uh, again back into this register array. And the last part is control unit. So, it control and executes the flow of data bet uh, between your microprocessor, memory and peripheral. So, uh, if I have got a processor, uh, I have got a register array, then I want to uh, input the data from where the input will come. Input will be entered into the register array with the help of an input device like a keyboard. So, I want a connection between that input device and a processor so that the data is being loaded into the register array. Then I have performed the operation. After performing the operation, I want to display my result. Now, where I will display my result? So, to display the result, I again need an output device. So, uh, I need an input device to enter the data, then I need an output device where I can display my result. So, I can say this control unit, it control and executes the flow of data between your processor, memory and input and output means these are the peripherals, external world. And memory, why I need the memory? If uh, I have got uh, a program where I am adding uh, a large set of data. I may be 100 numbers and I want to keep every result, every intermediate result for future purpose. So, I need a memory to uh, for backup purpose. So, these base are the three basic components of a microprocessor, arithmetic logic unit, register array and a control unit. Now, I can see that uh, this is a, uh, this is the organization of a microprocessor as it does not have any input or output device, it does not have a memory, it does not have the buses connecting these components. So, it is the only picture of a microprocessor 
and I can say that microprocessor as a standalone device is not capable of performing a particular application. So, these are some basic terms related to the processor. First is the chip or IC. It is a small thin piece of silicon with the required circuits and transistors etched on it to perform a particular function. So, and the in the definition of microprocessor, I have told that uh, it is a clock driven IC which is fabricated with LSI or VLSI technology. So, uh, it is a if I talk about 8085, it is a dual inline package. It has same number of pins arranged on left and right and right side. So, uh, it is nothing but a small, small piece of silicon IC. Then bit. Bit is the fundamental storage unit of a computer memory. It can have only two values 0 or a 1. Then bit size. Bit size refer to the number of bits that can be processed simultaneously by the basic arithmetic circuits of the processor. So, uh, bit size refer to its capacity. If I say that 8085 is an 8 bit processor, that means that it can read or write 8 bit data at any time. That means it can perform the arithmetic and logic operations on 8 bit data. It will give you the result uh, in 8 bit registers. So, the basic uh, 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 basic foundation for 8085 is that it is an 8 bit processor. So, all the registers will be 8 bit. You will be performing operation on 8 bit data. You will be getting your result 8 bit. In many cases, your result may exceed 8 bit, but we have some other provisions to store that bit, but we call it as a 8 bit register. So, bit size refer to the number of bits that can be processed simultaneously by the basic arithmetic circuit of the processor. Then a byte. 8 bit, the combination of 8 bits is referred to as a byte. Then nibble. Combination of 4 bits is said to as a nibble. So, if I have got 8 bit data, that is a single byte, that 8 bit data, uh, for example, a series of 1, this is my 8 bit data uh, where I have taken a series of 1. If I pair them, I have made them a group of 4 bits each. I can say that the group of 4 bits is called as a nibble, where the bit starting from the LSB side is known as the lower nibble and the bits ending with my MSB is known as my higher nibble. So, nibble is nothing but a combination of 4 bits. So, in an 8 bit word or in an 8 bit data, you can have 2 nibbles, a lower nibble and a higher nibble. Then kilobyte. So, now we are referring to the size of a memory. If I have got a 1 KB memory size, that means I have got uh, so 1024 locations and where each location can store byte. Kilo means I have one, got 1024 locations, byte means its capacity. It Every location can store 8 bit data. Same way, megabyte again mega will represent through the number of locations stacked up and byte will refer to the capacity of each location. Now, the other terms related to the processor or I can say related to a uh, uh, processor to a programmable device or a processor based system. So, if uh, like in the previous lecture, we, uh, previous slide I have shown that I have gone up, I have got a processor this was the processor which was being divided into ALU, register and a control unit. This was the processor components. We have already talked that this processor is not capable of performing any function. So, I must have a input and output device. input or output device. I must have a memory. You can have a RAM. You can have a ROM. So, I have got a processor, I have got an input and output device, I have got a memory that is RAM and ROM. Now, how these devices will be connected? 
if i if this is actually the comp or com all the other components of a mu p based system so in any microprocessor based system these three are the major components a microprocessor input and output device and a memory now how these systems will be connected so i i can connect them with the help of any wire so here we have got a combination of wires this we call it as a bus so bus is nothing but a combination of wires so to connect microprocessor with input output device and a memory i need a bus i need a combination of wires so bus is nothing but a group of wires where each wire carry a single bit so each wire is carrying certain information we call it as a bus and now to where it will ca carry this information it can carry this information to any peripheral so first was the bus now i have seen i have shown you that i have got certain buses and they will be just uh, they are connecting this processor input output device and the memory via uh, and peripheral so what uh, there are, we have got certain types of buses we have got a address bus data bus and a control bus address bus is nothing but it is used to carry the 16 bits of memory address so we have got 16 wires which are being used to carry the memory address between these components then a data bus data bus is used to carry the data or your information then a control bus so control bus is used to carry the timing and synchronization signals and all these we call it as a system bus then memory memory is nothing but a group uh, you have got a stack of locations where you can store your input or your output or any information for future purpose so memory if i say i can broadly classify into primary and secondary memory so primary memory is the one which i am being using it here and secondary for backup purpose so primary i can further classify it into read uh, ram and rom ram if i want to alter any kind of information i'll store it in my ram and if i want that i just want to read that particular memory then i will store that uh, information into rom like the program memory if i don't want to change the my, my program i want to freeze it then i will store my program in rom further your ram that is your random access memory can be classified into static ram dynamic ram you can further have the variations of read only memory your uh, eprom eeprom mask rom programmable prom and flash memory same way if i talk about the secondary memory which is a backup memory secondary memory is generally classified into two parts semi random access and serial access serial access says that if i have to retrieve a information which is in some way in midway then i have to go page by page so i'll just turn page by page from the starting page and i'll go to that middle page and i'll retrieve that information it is called as serial access while in semi random access if i want to retrieve the information some way in midway then i'll directly go to that particular information and i'll retrieve it so your semi random access like the floppy disk which we used previously they are the ex examples of your semi random ex uh, of your serial access where i have to uh, go by page and pa by page by page to retrieve the information and your semi random access your pen drives they are the examples of your sem semi random access where the information which you want you directly just jump to that information and you retrieve that information then input device so you can have a print you can have a keyboard as a input device you can have a mouse as a input device then output device you can have a printer connected to the processor if you want to print your output command or you can have a lcd you have a seven segment board leds if you want to just uh, see the blinking of uh, lights so you can have a different output devices connected with the processor then the computer architecture so the uh, basic architecture of microprocessor is divided into two parts von neumann architecture and harvard architecture von neumann says that uh, you have got a program and a data and you have got a memory so von neumann says that the same memory is being used to store my program as well as my data while harvard architecture says that i'll have a, i will have a 
separate set of memory for program storage and for data storage. So, von Neumann says that I have got a single space which is being used on time sharing basis by my program memory and my data memory. So, I will have a common set of bus to access these program and data memory because they are only the same ones. So, I cannot perform my I cannot perform read and write operations simultaneously on this my program and data memory. On the other hand, Harvard architecture says that you have got a separate set of program and data memory. So, you can have a separate set of buses to access these memories and if you have a separate set of buses to access these memories, you can just perform read and write operation simultaneously. So, in case of von Neumann, I cannot perform the simultaneous operation. So, obviously, the speed in case of Harvard architecture is better as compared to the von Neumann architecture. The 8085 is based, 8085 microprocessor is based on the von Neumann architecture. Then we have the processors uh, being classified into the RISC and SIS categories. RISC says that reduced instruction set, SIS is the complex instruction set. So, in case of RISC, uh, reduced instruction set, you have got a less number of instructions and complex says that you have got a instruction which is uh, complicated, which will perform multiple operations. Reduced instruction set that you have got the small number of instructions and complex says that you have got a instruction, you have got a very uh, lengthy instruction set and the instructions are so complicated that the single instruction, uh, instructions should be such that uh, the syntax of instruction is self explanatory. But if I write the instruction in such a manner that it is such a big size instruction that will take a long time, then I can say it is a complex one. Then finally, the language. So, the language we generally use to write our program is the assembly language. We use to write the programs in C language also for uh, 8051 controller. Uh, the, but the language which pro, uh, your processor understands, processor understands only the machine language. So, whatever program you are writing, ev uh, the, every instruction is being converted in, into its operational codes that is output, that is a machine language code or you can say. So, that is nothing but a binary number. So, processor can read only the numbers. Processor does not understand your assembly language. If, if you say uh, LXI H, LXI H2050, the processor does not get what do you mean by LXI H2050. Instead, the LXI H will be converted into its operational code 215020. So, 21 corresponds to the operational code of LXI H and by reading 21, processor comes to know that it has to load a 16 bit data into HL pair. So, processor understands only this operational code, only the machine language, only this binary codes. This is the microprocessor based system where I have got a CPU as your processor, memory, input and a output device. And we can see I have got a three set of buses, data bus, address bus and a control bus. So, data bus is a bidirectional bus which is being used to carry data between these devices. Address bus is a unidirectional bus which is used to carry 16 bit memory address and control bus is used to carry my timing and synchronization signals. So, if I am reading a, if I am reading a signal, uh, if I am reading a data from my memory, then my control bus must be having a read signal. Basic concepts of microprocessor, there, there are certain difference, there are some similar terms like a microcomputer, processor and a controller with some uh, slight variation. Uh, microcomputer is a uh, computer with microprocessor as its CPU. It includes memory, input, output, etcetera. Microprocessor is a silicon chip which includes ALU, your registers and a control unit. Microcomputer was having, uh, uh, microcomputer was having microprocessor as its CPU and it has other components also. Microprocessor is having ALU, register and control unit. Then a controller. So, controller is again IC which includes processor, memory, input, output all on a single package, all on a single IC. You can say they all are embedded on a single chip. So, controller IC is, uh, uh, they varies from application to application. So, if I have an application where I need to, uh, uh, if I want to make my Diwali light, so I want to blink the LEDs, I will have a different, uh, I will have different components fabricated on a single IC and if I want to make a washing machine, I will have different components. So, the microcontroller is nothing but all the components fabricated on a single chip, you know, as, as your microcontroller. Whereas, in your microprocessor, all the components, you are, they are not fabricated on a single chip. So, if you uh, say that, uh, if any of the component 
if any of the component works out, if any of the component fails, then you can just replace that particular component in case of microprocessor. And if you want to extend your memory, you can, uh, like the in case of your laptop, if you want to extend your memory, it is possible for you. But in case of a microcontroller, the memory is also fabricated on a single chip. So, if any of the component fails, my entire chip is gone and I cannot extend my memory in case of a controller because I cannot, uh, I cannot replace any of the component which is already being embedded on a single chip. So, all the components are being fabricated on a single chip in a controller that is why controller is cost effective as compared to your processor. Then basic concepts of microprocessor, how do you differentiate a processor? Uh, these days, we all are very uh, used to of uh, buying a laptop and we are very keen to features of a laptop. So, how do you uh, differentiate? How do you uh, make a selection for the your laptop? Obviously, it is not based on its color. You make a uh, selection for the type of laptop based on its processor. So, how can you differentiate between the processors? So, processors can be differentiated based on its instruction set. There is a number of instructions it is having. So, if I have got a large set of instruction that means I can perform many operations. Then the bandwidth, the number of bits it can process. Like I said that uh, uh, 8085 is a 8 bit processor. So, it can perform operations on 8 bit data only. In uh, Intel uh, has given 4004 as its 4 bit processor in 1971 which was the first Intel processor launched in 1971. So, bandwidth refers to the number of bits which it can process. So, if I have got a 64 bit, uh, then I can say that it can process 64 bit data. It can add or subtract 64 bit, bit data at any time. Uh, if, I, if I compare it with 8085, 8085 can perform operation on 8 bit data. So, for 64 bit data, I have to perform the same operation 8 times. Then the clock speed. So, clock speed is generally in megahertz. It refers to the execution time, how fast you uh, or you can say the time it takes to execute your instructions per second. So, these are the three major components based on which the processor is being divided, instruction set, bandwidth and a clock speed. So, clock speed is one of the major thing we are looking for. We are majorly looking for the instruction speed. We say that we want a laptop, we want a processor which is very fast in its execution. So, processor when it, uh, uh, when it executes an instruction, it generally follows three steps. It for, the other three steps are fetch, then decode and execute. So, the three steps are fetch, decode and execute. It simply means read, interpret and perform. So, if I am, uh, so first the processor will just go to a memory address it will just read that instruction and the instruction is already in assembly language, processor does not get anything about it. So, processor the that the uh, instruction which you have read or which you have fetched that op code the its op code will be sent to the instruction decoder. That instruction decoder will decode it, will tell you the significant meaning of that particular instruction and finally, it will be sent to the machine cycle encoder where the uh, along with the your ALU your arithmetic and logic unit where the uh, operation will be finally performed. So, there are three basic steps fetch, decode and execute. After completion of this execution stage, this is the total time which I call it as the speed. Uh, this is the total time delay or I can say because fetch plus decode plus execute is the total time which has been referred here as the time taken for complete execution of an instruction. This is the pre-request step what all concepts are being required to study about the microprocessor. So, you need the number system. You need to have a knowledge about the number system that is the basic conversions from decimal to hexadecimal, how can you convert a number. So, if you have got a decimal number and if you want to convert it into hexadecimal, then we know that uh, to convert a decimal number to binary, we can just divide it by 2. If convert it to decimal to hexadecimal, I can just divide it by 16. And for the decimal part, you have to do the opposite that you have to multiply the numbers. So, the conversions are required as a pre-requested one uh, for have a complete understanding for the microprocessor. Then the BCH, binary coded hexadecimal. BCH is being generally, it is a number system which is being generally used in case of microprocessor. So, you will have the numbers generally in the BCH forms, binary coded hexadecimal, where each digit is being represented into 4 bits. So, like 2AC, 
So, C is represented into 4 bits. C means uh, 12. So, 1100. A means 10. 10102 means 0010. So, every digit is being represented into 4 bits. This says the BCH. So, BCH is a commonly used form number system format for the microprocessor. And same with another example. So, if you have got a decimal point, you can just do it in the same way. So, the last one is the complements. So, you have to store the numbers. So, you want to have a 1's complement and 2's complement to repre represent your negative numbers. So, 2's complement is nothing but the 1's complement and plus 1. This slide shows the 2's complement of the various decimal numbers. So, this was all about, all about the basics of microprocessor, the introduction to the microprocessor, its basic definition. And uh, if you have got any doubt, then you can contact me. Thank you.